Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And this podcast is going to kick off a fancy month for us. We we kind of do these themed months uh, over in the self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. And it's a way for us, honestly, I mean, it's a way for us to kind of plan content uh, and and figure out what to offer everyone. Um, and people can play along and, and sew along. And get so much on tangents like yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to, it's tangent control. That's right. So if you're in the self Zone Facebook group, you know, you don't have to make like what we're making that month. It's just kind of a way for us to organize ourselves. It's a guide. And some people like it. Some people like the themes. You know, we didn't have wolf costume month, and I made a wolf costume. That's right. Right? You you made the wolf costume month. And you helped. Actually, it's active wear month, though. So... I mean, it, I think it you counts. Think it fit? It's a you think wolf. it's a dance costume. It is a dance costume. Okay, correct. But that is another podcast. I think would be awesome. Well, oh, oh, duh. For okay, preparation for Halloween. Hold on, taking a note. Hey, okay, we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about my wedding dress that mom made. And mom, do you know? Today is my anniversary. I was going to say. Yeah. Is it, is, I, I, I was trying to figure out what day it was. Is yeah. it today the 25th or 6th? Today is the 26th. Okay. And yeah. it is my anniversary. And, and I tomorrow didn't, is Elliot's birthday. That, and I didn't even plan it that way. I just think it's kind of funny. I forgot it was my anniversary until Facebook told me this morning. Um, like, I know when my anniversary is, but I just don't know what day it is. Well, that's it. I you know. know. That's what I said. I woke up going, yeah. oh, is it? What day is it? And, and I Derek and I spoke to one another, and he went on a run and everything. We didn't say anything. And so I was like, oh, well, okay. We both Well, you know about your dad and I, like him not knowing our anniversary, like saying it was on another date. Like mm-hmm. I said, happy anniversary. And he said, no, it's tomorrow. And I said, well, at least you I thought said, it was somewhere. I right? said, no, it's on your dad's birthday. <laughs> and he's like, no, it wasn't. It was the day after. And I was like, well, when we got married, you told me it was your dad's birthday. <laughs> So you got one of them wrong. Anyway, he was wrong. He was wrong. So Fancy Month uh, is going to, we're going to really draw on a lot of ZD's expertise here. And a lot of it has to do with formal wear uh, for, you know, traditionally for women. But I think these techniques can be applied to so many places. And you keep saying fancy wear and I keep thinking of your dog. My dog fancy. I'll put a picture of her in there. Um, But... The the zine for this month, if you are a member, we are going to have some really in-depth pictures of both my wedding dress and Hillary's wedding dress. So Hillary is uh, the oldest daughter of the the trio here, and uh, they are going to be in-depth you know, pictures about the construction right. and everything that we discussed here. And we here. won't talk about Lindsay's wedding dress because she wore a suit. That's and that you pants didn't make. With pants. <laughs> I had to alter it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. I had to alter that wedding to death. Yes. I altered her, her, and her, her wife's, wife's dress. dress and I altered her dress. And then they told me they wanted me to make the cake, so I went and bought one. <laughs> Well, but, I made, okay. I bought I, the I bought that cake. Uh, Ask questions, and then I they said, "Oh, do you?" I I said, "Now there's going to be like a topper on it, uh-huh. you know, because her mother actually made the topper." Right. And uh, they said, "Oh, we can put a reinforcement in." The reinforcement was seventy five dollars. Just so everybody knows. <laughs> Ask. I expected this cake to be like under two hundred dollars, and it wasn't because yeah. it was just a little one layer. They had cupcakes too. Well, so yeah, for that for for that wedding, I made the ring bearers pillow, and I did the bride's hair. Do you remember that's that? That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So that was, those, I dressed the bride and the groom. Those and were, the, no, the bride and the, the bride. bride and the bride, or yeah. you know, um, uh, but that. You didn't. You didn't make Lindsay's suit from the ground up. Unfortunately, no, no, no. That's yeah. fine. It was <laughs> fine. It was just fine. In okay. fact, I remember we were very busy around that, that time. That was a very busy time. Yes, yeah. Yes. And you didn't even have children yet, did no, you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. But it was very busy. So we've got my wedding dress hanging here. Um, my wedding dress is made from a pale, a very pale pink silk satin, almost champagne-y. In the with fluorescent, like a pink, was it like a pink? cast in the fluorescent light it can look really beige well and your lace is champagne and my lace is champagne uh so i got engaged in paris france 
not Paris, Missouri. Uh, <laughs> Which we do have. We do have that. So my uh, my husband flew to Paris and surprised me while I was there. Being Well, he didn't surprise you. He screwed it up. But anyway, <laughs> we're still upset about you're, that. You're so sweet, Mom. We're still upset that we're, yeah. we're sure we could have made up a better lie, and you wouldn't have guessed. The takeaway from that story is my husband's a really bad liar, which is a yeah a good thing, which is right? Just reason to marry him. No, but it was still very special, and I kind of knew this was coming. I think like that that we were going to get engaged. In fact, I gave my husband my engagement rings. I said, "You give these back to me when you're ready," you know, and because they so, were family rings. Yeah, they were family rings that I wanted to use. So I gave them to him. I said, you give these back to me when you're ready. He's like, okay. So when I was on this trip, I'm not going to lie, I was going to buy fabric for my wedding dress. Just in case. No matter what. No matter who you were marrying. No matter who I was marrying. (laughs) And so he ended up surprising me, uh, you know, and and flying in and proposing. Duh. You know, I said yes. And so he got to go shopping with me for the fabric in Paris. And I didn't know what I wanted the dress to look like. I had some ideas. This was around the time that Kate Middleton and, you know, Prince William got married. It was... What's it? Yes, because I remember kind of looking at her lace placement. So she had been married. I think so. I well, think so. I can so. look it up for you, but go ahead. Yeah, so I remember looking at that, and lace was very in. Lace is still very in. I think lace is really having a... I think lace is nice for a wedding. Now, your sister was different. No she lace. She didn't have any lace. No lace, no bows, no pearls. Yeah, no nothing like said. that, yeah. right? So I really wanted... I liked I liked the idea of the lace, and I went to, um, you know, the Fabric District in Paris. It is uh, on Montmartre, the, you know, the hill where the Sacre Coeur is, and I went shopping, um, there, let's see. Oh, they got married in 2011. Yep, and I got married in 2012. 12. So that is yep. exactly that is what, what was happened. sort of on my mind, honestly, yep. was just, you know, wedding dress design. Now, this is going to come up later in Fancy Month, but Mom has been around wedding dresses, making them, altering them, owning a bridal and formal wear store. You know, mm-hmm. you've done that. Right. I have seen a lot of wedding dresses. Oh, Yeah. I have helped people shop for them. We both worked at David's oh, Bridal. Yeah. I, I opened David's that. Bridal here. I forgot that. Right? So I knew that there were certain things about wedding dresses that I didn't want. You know, uh-huh. I, I didn't want a big ball gown right. type dress. And that didn't surprise me because I felt like you had worn a lot of formal wear you know what I mean? That I did. You I got wait- the chance to right, do that. that. You weren't waiting for the princess dress because right. you had wear- been in so many productions with costumes and glitter and glitz. No, and, and when you when you yeah. owned the gown house, right? We would have uh, people come in and they'd say, "I want the Cinderella dress." Right. They would say, "I it's it's right. the only time it's I'm going to be time. able to wear this." We also had people come in that hadn't worn a dress in like eight years. And yes, like and now that. they were yeah. going to you know wear right. one for their wedding or whatever. So I I understand if people right. want you know the floof and everything. Um, but I was like, oh, I don't think I want that. And I was looking at the lace, and then I decided that I wanted it short, shorter. Right. Not you, know, you didn't want to the floor. I didn't want it floor length. We went we went through that of or having a detachable long dress. Uh, Skirt. Remember, we, we went did. through that thought. We went through, like, it was going to be a right. convertible, yeah, dress. Yeah. We were going to um, have this with an underskirt under it. Now I'm well, like, I forgot about that. Well, and basically you got married outside, too. Yes. So this this had some, the, you know, the venue and the dress sort of rely on each other, it seems like. I also bought this fabric sort of based off of, like, feel and color, but I really, honestly, when I bought it, right. did not know what I wanted the dress to look like. And I think maybe at one point we did go through some ideas and you were like, this fabric isn't great for that. Right. She you did know? not consult me before she bought this fabric or tell me what kind of wedding dress she might like. Right. Mom didn't because come to Paris. Because she didn't know. No. Like your silk is is more of a, like a charmeuse compared to Hillary's as a satin. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, this is like, like a slip could be made this could out of be this. Be the best nightgown. Yeah. In the world. Well, don't we have this still? Don't you have this? Yeah, do we have more of this we have fabric. Some. We do. Yeah. I want to make lingerie we, out of it. What you should make is like some camisole. That is exactly you know? yes. That's Cat a, pants would be great. Yes, that's exactly what I want to make out of it. Oh, I should like make it for my anniversary and wear it tonight. And yeah, really, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Next year. Oh, yes. <laughs> make it like 
this so, is a, this is what you're. This is six. Six. So you got to your tenth. You think I got something. to my tenth? Yeah. Okay. And then he'll be like, "I know I'll wear it," and he'll be like, "That's your wedding dress, yeah, he'll isn't know. it?" Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but he was there when I bought the fabric. Oh, and he did go with you. Yes, I didn't know that. He went with me. And we bought this fabric, and I bought the lace. And you know what? I did not know what the word for lace was when I was there. Oh, now, I lived in French. Paris, you know, yes. for a semester. I studied French. That was know. like the third or fourth time you'd and, been to France. Yes, and I was like, yeah. you know what? I don't know what the word for lace is. It is dentelle, okay? okay. And that must that word is must be related to, like, the word for teeth somehow something about yes. how it's on the loom like maybe yeah i don't know so like yeah uh so like there's dentil trim in um in uh architecture oh really yeah, okay it's like teeth there you go so i bought the lace and i bought the fabric and this woman i was looking at the lace and the lace is um you know a shorter width of fabric right it's, well it's, yes and it's, yours was trimmed i believe on both sides Yes. Was it not? So this, it had the scallop on both sides. Okay, you know what? I don't want to stick my face in my, or stick my foot in my mouth. I, this is not Chantilly. Chantilly. No. Uh-uh. But this is something. I found out what kind of lace this was and yeah, now I can't you know, remember I'm what not it sure is. either. It might be Lever's lace. Yeah. Okay, because it's got the strings on the end. Right, it has the fringe. But I was the looking. Hair, the eyelash yes. edge. I was looking at the lace, and I was asking the prices, and she got out this beaded lace. I mean, it was heavily beaded. And it was like, I don't know, 200 euros mm-hmm. a yard. and I or, or maybe it was like 100 euros a yard. That would have translated like almost $200 right. or something. And I thought, you know, I'm not – this hand-beaded lace is beautiful – But I thought, I don't want beads everywhere on my dress Uh if I want beads. And, you know, we know how to bead. Right. So I got something without beads. It was still pretty expensive. The silk was still pretty expensive. Well, and it has a Lurex thread in it. So it has a little bit of a... Yeah, the lace has a sparkle to it. Bit of a glitz, yeah. And after the woman cut the fabric, she folded it up, and she didn't give it to me. She carried it to the register... And Derek's like, what? Do people steal lace in France? Well, he was like, why Why did she not just give that to you? Because he's like seeing other people bringing right. their fabric to the register, right? So then we get to the register, and we get the total for, <laughs> for the, for the right. fabric. And, I mean, I think I spent like $500 on the fabric. Right. I mean, I spent more on my fabric than some people spend – on their wedding dress, you know. Right. But it's well, what and we've it's always what I wanted, actually you know? we've always kind of done that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Lindsay said that one time with a prom dress. She said something like, "Well, mom, you know, so and so said they spent $250, you know, on their dress." <laughs> and I said, well, I spent, you know, almost $200 on your fabric, but it has $14,000 worth of, of labor work and design yeah. in it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, the fabric is really nice. And then I wanted a lace overlay. And this was one point where you said, this lace is not strong enough. It's not sturdy. Yes. To hold up a dress. Right. You know, and I was like, oh, but I really want this, you know. And so... The way this dress is, and there will be a picture in the show notes for sure. I'll send it to Sam right now. Um, it's a, a strapless underlay made of the satin, right? Okay. With sort of a sweetheart kind of shape, you know, right. over the bust, right? The satin or the charmeuse. The is, sil- yeah, yeah, the silk charmeuse. And then there's a lace overlay, and the sleeves go down to about my elbow. And the scallop... But the sleeves are just lace. Is that the what sleeves said? are just lace. Yeah. I, I I may not have made that clear, I but don't that's know good. If you did either, yeah. And then the overlay, it sort of talk to me. What would you say, like below that waistline? It kind of opens. What do we call that? What should we call that? No, it is kind of an empire waistline. Yes, it is. It's empire. A high waistline. Excuse me. It's, uh, it's, it's French fabric. <laughs> it's an empire. It's French French fabric. Um. You know, it's like a cutaway. Yes, yeah, like a like a cutaway coat almost. Yeah, how it comes down. And then in the back, it does kind of have a semblance of what 
you know, down around your butt, I guess it was, right? Is this above your butt or right at it? I think I it's know. right below, yeah. like, my bottom yeah. there. And so the top of the dress, like mom wanted to make clear, is all lace, like, right. you know, around the shoulders and the sleeves. And so what mom did there was to make my dreams come true, she lined it with tulle and, like, netting, okay? Right. And it made... Because that makes it sturdy. It was just so perfect. Right. Uh, it, it made it sturdy. So we had to keep it transparent. Uh, yeah, sturdy Couldn't yet, use my cotton organdy there. No, sturdy yet transparent, okay? Uh, and then it has a high-low hem. Which we discussed big time because we were not fond of that at the time. And for some reason, this dress to us really lent itself well when you look at the top with that cutaway it's a similar shape it's got the high low there and when no, we know no, it's not that extreme well either. right it's I what guess, four to six inches sure so like a, somebody said they didn't like high low hems and i was right. like oh i had one of my wedding dress and they're talking about like above the yeah we're where talking you're like about, above the knee we're talking and then down about the, gucci, gucci uh, right. level in front and long in the back yes you know? yes so this this was sort of like knee and then you know calf uh in the back uh, is sort of Sort of where this one was. And so the treatment of... I mean, this dress is pretty simple. It would have been simple, too, if you knew what I wanted, you know, at first. But you kind of had to go through and figure this stuff out. But this hem is very fluttery. Like we said, this the satin is almost like lingerie weight. Yeah. Okay? And the hem, though, tell them how you finished this Well, the, isn't dress. the hem a rolled hem? It is yeah. a rolled hem. Um, I think I even checked. on. Excuse me. Look, wait. This is a three-thread rolled. rolled yeah. yeah. It's. Is it a hem or an edge, Mom? It's an edge. Yeah, I don't think it's rolled. I think it's an edge. You mean hem then? <clears throat> yeah, the hem. hem. So, so on your on your baby lock and lighten or, or your baby lock, whatever. It's a three-thread rolled hem. So it's the flatter <clears throat> right. stitch, and not I the edge. And I repeated the the little bit of the lurex was in the thread. Yeah, so and I repeated that. If you can imagine, a few people will talk in the group about like, oh, this is a formal dress. I should do this a certain way. A lot of people don't think about just finishing off a dress. You spent five hundred dollars on the fabric, just doing it on the surgery. Well, and because it's a high low hem, we didn't want the hem. No, it was too. If I would have faced the back hem, it was too heavy for this fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. So the lining just goes to the. High. The high point. Level. It, right. It's not, you know, the, the tail of the dress is not lined. Right. So it's just made to flutter. I do just want people to envision you getting this whole lace dress made, and it's made out of this extensive fabric and everything, and you went to your serger, and you threaded it That's up right. with this metallic thread, That's and you correct. just zoom zoomed. That's right. You know, and that was, I mean, I'm not saying that's it, but it's okay. Sometimes this is appropriate. I think people have some preconceived notions about formal wear where they think it has to be like a, I don't know, like a. Like hand-picked, everything or every, hand done. Yes, or, everything must okay. be done by hand or something. It's and, not always and, the best way. some reason, you know, some of the reasons things were done by hand is because people didn't have sewing machines. That's right. Uh, yeah. Okay, a hand, a hand done hem on this dress. Would have offered more opportunity for distortion, I feel Probably. like. I feel like the machine did a very regular, yeah. quick, light job of the, you know, of the hem. So I, I think that that is uh, something to keep in mind. Okay, so, and the and the lining is hemmed the same way. Yes. The, I just now, okay. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. I was just looking like, why did I not put a side zipper in this? It, and then I just realized it's because of that this belt. trim. Yes. yes. Okay. Because so I'm like, usually in a formal dress like this, yeah, I will put an invisible zipper or hand-picked. I have done hand-picked if I've had to for I don't know what reason. Um, I think one time I hand-picked it because somebody else was using the zipper foot. <laughs> you know, invisible. But um, yes, because there is a belt around the ump ampere. There's a... 
not a what do you a belt to well, trim. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know yeah. What, so that must be why I did that in the back. Otherwise, you would have had this like tucked down on one side and not the other. That's right. Yeah, so but I was like, why did I put a back zipper in? So that's why. Okay, so a couple. So it, you do have to think about these things. You, when you do. Make them. You do. It looks simple, but you have to right. do a lot of thinking. So let's take a little break and then let's come back and talk about some of the challenges that happened with this lace. And I'm excited to talk about uh, the scalloping and whatnot, okay? Okay. Hey, Mom. Yeah? Um, you can feel free to compliment me. Oh, no. On, on what? On this. What? My feel free to compliment me enamel lapel pin. Oh, Mallory. Every time that you hear something wrong, are you going to make a lapel pin about it? Maybe. Um, do you do you want one? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, Isn't it teal? Yes, it's teal and pink. And you can get one by going to sewhere.com slash compliment. Just so you know, I'm not putting it on my lapel. It's going on my hat. Oh, it's going on your hat. It could be a hat pin, too. Okay. All right. So if you want to get in on the feel free to compliment me uh, in in on the club, go to SoHere.com slash compliment and order our very first SoHere.com lapel pin. So, 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 out loud. And we're back. So I bought this beautiful lace in France and I wanted to use the scallop to full effect. Okay. So it was pretty easy to get the scallop on the sleeve hem, right? Right. It's a it's a one piece sleeve, and you just lay it out so that right. the hem lands on the scallops, right? right? Uh, the back lace um, in the lower torso area. Yeah, I remember you wanting this to go down more now, and it is more straight across because of the lace. Well, the, so the scallop wasn't an issue when we decided to go straight across. We had another issue, which we'll talk about later. But in the front, this cutaway, mm -hmm. I remember this being a bit of a challenge yep. for us. It was. In how to get the scallop on there, because it, was it not, it wasn't like. I sewed it on. I know you did. I, I remember. Cut it off and sewed it on, and I can see it right here. I wanted the cutaway to be curved, right. not straight. So I had to. I I remember thinking, if I cut the lace on the bias, will it screw up? And I, I don't I don't remember the whole process, but I do remember that one. I also remember, you know, if you'll notice, the top of the bias is attached at the seams. Top of the bodice. The bodice. I'm sorry, is attached at the seams. Um, yes. where the lace is, and it hangs loose, except on the sides, uh, you know, there's some tacking. There's some... Uh... So I want to... But I want to talk about okay. this cutaway, this curved yeah. cutaway. You're getting like... <laughs> I'm just I, trying to remember. I see this mom dress. like getting into this. Reverie. My mind is going. Uh, what yeah. <laughs> my mind is going. Oh my god! Look at all these issues I dealt with. Okay. okay. So the cutaway in the front is a curved, you know, um, right. cutaway. So then what she did was she cut some of the scallop off the lace and applied it to that curve right. in order to make it look like this scallop was that just it was continuing. on the curve. Right. And so how she did that. Okay, was with a teeny, teeny weeny zigzag, teeny weeny zigzag with embroidery thread that matched. I believe it was a rayon thread. And did you put something in here? No, no, I don't think it's just so. Just two layers of the lace. I, I may have had it on a um, stabilizer, a or stabilizer something. like a melt away. Sewing lace doesn't have to be difficult. And we, episode two of this podcast is about stretch lace. You know, people talk about like choosing a needle for it and stuff, you know? Uh -huh. and it's like, well, your needle does barely even pierces anything. Yeah. You're just probably goes through anything. Holes, I just, I used know? a tiny needle. I think I used, I might have used a 60 because did. I didn't want it to do anything. Now, the back of this, so the, the V, it's a V neck. The lace is uh, in a V neck on the front and the back. So that was just cut. That was actually just cut along yes, along, along that the line. line. Yes. But the back, I remember, is having all this trouble with how the lace was laying yeah. in the back because you had to do this back zipper. And I think this is really interesting because the lace is not seamed up. No, the back. 
In Actually, fact, it's not even finished. It's not. It's just cut. It's not even finished. It is. Lace does not ravel. That's right. Right? Or fray. Uh-huh. So I believe we cut it. And what happened was um, when I would go to him it, it would, you know, it just pucker a little bit or something. So it was the way it was laying on my butt. It my just butt look was right. kind of yeah, an issue or something, right. you know. So it's not finished but in order for it to not fly away correct right? uh-huh we chose to put we chose to put little nylon snaps what in three places mm-hmm. uh three or four three so it sort of is turned in we'll have to get a close shot of this, this. well this is all going to be in the zine yeah okay this is really hard to describe i think and give you a mental picture yes no so, one knew those snaps were there. No. But Mallory and I. And it ended up laying so nicely on my body, you know, that... I know. We need to do that again sometime. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It was just interesting that it wasn't laying laying well when it was completely sewn, you know, up in a seam. So, you know, you don't always have to seam it. So what now mom, mom has looked at the dress, and then she's made this big face. Okay, talk into your microphone about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have used an invisible zipper, and they don't come in exactly the color of this dress. So I used like a beige zipper that had sort of a beige or off-white pull, correct? The uh-huh. only part of the zipper that shows. And it didn't match the dress. So what happened, Mallory? So you got out your nail polish. That's right. I matched my nail polish to my dress. I mean, and I'm sitting like... It's, two, per- it's perfect. I'm sitting two feet from this dress, and I can barely see the zipper pull. So. Well, and <clears throat> I just noticed I only, on this one, I only painted the top. I didn't even paint the underneath, it looks like. Well, because and that, the beige, you know, is close. That's right. And I only, and I'm amazed I did that. Boy, I took a lot of trouble just for this dress. You're awesome. Is this, this isn't on the bias. My dress is not on the no. bias. The, no, the it's silk not. It's true. No. I know I said satin. Other earlier, than, but. you know, it is a flared skirt. So your hem is definitely a lot on the bias because of, you know, the curve yes. and all of that. Now, one thing you did do in here, uh, which is really nice. I guess on some of well, I think I only did it on, on your the, back on the seam, back seam. So let's talk about yeah, let's talk about the finishing of the actual the fabric that is not lace, okay? Right. Um. So in the front, on the high hem area, these seams are just surged. That's right. They're three thread narrowed, right. right? And I believe I used embroidery thread on that also. It looks like it. It's a yeah. lightweight thread. Now the back seam, though, like you just said, mm-hmm. it would show a little bit. Show it might might show. You know, it's moving, it's like back behind you, it's da- you behind know. my legs, right? You know, and I mean, somebody's really gonna have to get down there to see how it's finished, I guess. But we wanted it to at least look neat. So, the what you did for that back seam is you three thread narrowed and you turned over, I and, hemmed it, and actually, yeah, yeah I you, did a tiny hem on the seam allowance, yeah, basically. And this is done with a super lightweight thread, yep, um, an embroidery thread. Once again, this isn't a seam that would get any stress, this little. Right. Hemmed. Well, and seam embroidery thread because it also has the same sheen. Yes. Right? And embroidery thread, you usually get to pick more colors. So color match and sheen match both. And I remember you using a size 60 needle on this. And right. this is, guys, this is some like super lightweight fabric and it feels like baby butt. Okay. It's super soft. Yeah. <laughs> um, the dress was very fluttery. And you the do. way it, you know, went around your, your legs. It was really pretty. So a lot of times, like a size 60 needle, I think, is a pretty extreme choice for a lot of... It's not always And a needed. note here uh-huh. is if you use a size 60 needle, your automatic threader will not work. That's it right. will not go through the eye of the needle. Somebody said something um, in the a thread not too long ago, a thread on the Facebook about how... Oh, her Microtex needles have such small eyes in them. They're hard to thread. Oh, it depends on the size of your needle. Yeah, it's not the type of needle. Uh-huh. It's the size. So when your needle size goes up, so does, so the, does eye. the eye. So does the eye. Right. 
No, that's a good point. And yeah. a lot of people, that's news to them that like, yeah. oh, a denim needle is really big. Well, you can get a size 70 denim yeah, needle. Yeah, you can. You know, I mean, uh, you can. Well, <laughs> and like I said, if you try and use that needle threader on, in that machine, you, you're, you'll really, you can screw your needle threader up. Yes. You know, you'll bend it. And then the lining, like we mentioned earlier, so it is the length of the high hem. So it's the same yes. length all the way around. And then you have made these little. Yep. I chain tack all the linings like that. Chain tack. That's, that's what I call okay. it. Okay, yeah. I Maybe didn't... it has another name. That's a good name. So there's an inch of chaining between the garment and the lining. That's right. So and it's that along it, the seam. So that it can move, but it doesn't shift. That's right. right. And so this is a big, this is a big key, I think. People, people struggle with these shiny fabrics. Yes. Um, to make nice seams. Right. And make invisible, like, you know, not distracting hems. Right. And not distracting linings. So the lining is completely separate, but it's just chained in a couple of places. So minimal shifting can happen, but it's not like you have this bulky seam where you've tried to incorporate all four layers right. into the seam. And I've right. seen that. I have also seen a lot And a of, lot of times you'll see that, and it looks puckery. It yes. won't go to get the... the Fabrics don't meld well. That's right. And it also, I think a big sign of a homemade dress is a big hem. You've mentioned this yes. before. Yes. A we big, don't do that anymore, guys. A big top-stitched hem. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is... Or even in any formal wear now, they don't do those deep hems. Uh, yeah. Even if it's a hand-picked hem or a, uh, you know, a blind hem or whatever... They don't do that anymore. The fabric is usually pretty a pretty flowy. Well, not all, even even the heavy satins. They don't look good with that heavy hem. Right. So you want a tiny hem. And if you're looking to stiffen a hem or something, right? You know that's another story. But okay? you still don't different. want that deep hem. Yes. You want your horse hair. No, yeah, that's right. a, I guess. Right. Yeah, I didn't mean it's a different story. Right, right. Like use a deep right, hem. Right. Yeah, you're gonna use. You're gonna use something else. Okay? Right. So that is a really good point. Um, of undergarments for this dress. So especially when I in 2012, um, I was not a busty person, and I went to Aerie. Like the day of my wedding, right? <laughs> Got a. I don't even know if it was supposed to be a strapless bra. I think I may have cut the straps yeah. off. Well, I know I noticed this is another thing when we talk about lining. Look how look what I lined the top with. Do you see? Oh, and I believe there's cotton organdy sandwiched in there. Okay, so I, we didn't talk about what the lining is made of. So what did you line this dress with? It's silk so, charmeuse on the outside. I'm about to rip this lace. Right. Okay. And uh, yeah, all this time and now you <laughs> yeah. rip it. Uh, it. It's 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 silk. The the yeah the the not the bodice below the empire. Sure, it's silk. It is silk, a lightweight silk, and the top is lined with. I mean, that's like a. I don't know, a cotton It's cotton it's a um it's a cotton damask is what it is. Um and then there's cotton organdy sandwich between as an interfacing. And do you see these things? You know, Did the, I put my bra through you those? Put your bra through those. I have no memory of doing so that. Mom, she bought, that is genius. So she bought a bra <laughs> and her genius mother. So there are Oh my god, guys. You got to get the zine this month, okay? <laughs> so there are... <laughs> holy... <laughs> holy, holy, holy. <laughs> so what there are in the bodice top is ribbon guides to put her bra her bra band through. So right. to wa wa weave it through those. And Okay, now there's another thing here, okay, that people don't get. This does have hanging straps. Yep. Yes. Um... But where do they come from, Mallory? They come from the waistline. Right. And then, and then what happens? Oh, man, the zine is going to be so good. Um, <laughs> there are little crochet chains that we use to guide it up through the bodice. That's right. Yes. So it ha it doesn't sag. It, ha it truly hangs, and there's no stress on the dress where there shouldn't be. Well, yeah. I can't tell you how many... Um, Ready to wear dresses, I have ripped those out of and put Replaced. in. And, and usually, especially if it's on a big, heavy dress, you'll need three. 
Oh, at yeah. Least, at least. Shoot. You usually need one in the front and two in the side. Sometimes you need one in the back. So sometimes you need four. So the way that this dress, we're going to talk about this later in the month. We're going to talk a little bit about buying and making wedding dresses and wedding dress styles uh, that are, uh, you know, some of their advantages and pitfalls and things like that, okay? So the way this dress was held up is, I mean, it's got sleeves. Like right, it has, right, right. No, you had no problem. You, yeah. you had something that went over but your shoulder. But also, you put that guide in for the bra. Right. And for me and my body, that bra was going to stay up on me. Yeah, we didn't have to worry. You weren't pulling your bra up during the whole... No, I know, didn't touch it. During, during the wedding or the reception. No, right? I didn't touch it, and I... Also, don't have a bust that is difficult. Didn't have a bust that was difficult to support, right? Or challenging to support, right. or something like that. So that's what was holding the dress up. Unfortunately, you me. had a dress that didn't. Your bust didn't have to hold it. Which people think the bust holds up their dress, and it's not. It's below the bust that, where your dress should be held. Well, up. that's what. Yeah, and that's right. what we're going to talk we'll about talk in that about episode. That. I mean, we got to get right. we got to get we that will info talk about out there. That. But I also chose a dress style that I honestly, I knew this was going to be comfortable and worry-free. Yes, I know. Okay? I know. I, oh, I know. I think about all those girls in those dresses, and I've built, like, you know, infrastructure yes. to try and keep it up on them. Yes. It was not a dress I sold them or I mm-hmm. recommended. It was right. something somebody else said, oh, you look great. No problem. You look great standing there and not moving. That's right. But when you have to move or you want to have be part of the party and have a good time, sometimes it becomes an issue. Well, and so flashback to six years ago today. Yes. Right? Six years That's ago so today. That's so funny that we're doing this Yeah, today. this is really interesting. So I, I woke up. We had a great day. Um, we go to the, we go to the venue, everything's going well, and then it turns out to be like 110 degrees. Yeah, we were worried about people <laughs> being cold because it was the end of May and that can happen here it in Missouri. It can happen. It can. Yes. No. The, for the three days before and the day of, it was like 99 degrees. And it like, was like. I we, feel like the next weekend it was like 70 yeah, like, it, it was, was very it temperate. Was. Yeah. No, I <laughs> bought this like industrial strength underwear to wear. Sorry, Mom. that was my phone. Uh-oh. <laughs> Demerit. Demerit. Um, so anyway, I brought this like, I mean, I ordered it like off the internet and it went like from under my bust, like almost down to my knees. So I would be like tight, you know, and it would give the the illusion that like I wasn't shaky anywhere, right? Yes, or anything. yes. I could not wear it. I wore my I wore my bike shorts. Yeah, I wore bike shorts under my chiffon uh, silk chiffon dress because it was so hot. Yeah, really. And you know, I what? constantly had like sweat running down my back. I was really glad that I'd chosen this dress. Oh no, joke! It was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I was really glad that I wasn't in a you know a big ball and gown we were, for that. Well, you and know. to reiterate, we were outside. We were outside, so we weren't in the air conditioning. We did have fans, mm-hmm. but. It was hot. It yes. was, and of course, we wanted all the. We had planned on almost all of the pictures being outside. Mm-hmm. So you know, eighty percent, eighty eighty five percent of the pictures were outside. Now, my photographer Stacy, and a lot of you know her. She's in the group. She's local. She's amazing, and she local, but internationally known. Yes, and she said she didn't do weddings when I asked her to That's photograph right. my wedding, and I said I promise it will be the most laid back fun wedding that you've ever been to and I am not, you know, like crazy. Like and Does I just she went agree with that a few today? photos. I think she had a good time. And mm-hmm. also when we were getting dressed, she's like, Okay, I guess I'm gonna go out and like take pictures of the of the tables and stuff. And when it's like it was only ninety nine degrees at that right. point. And I said to her, I was like, don't go take pictures of the tables. We she don't was, like that. She, she yeah, was like, she, I, was like I, said, I said, it's too hot for you to go out there. And she goes, <laughs> she's like, but don't you want to picture those? I'm like, no. I was like, <laughs> don't care. Like, I was like, just stay in here and get pictures of us, you know? So that was, I felt like I really, really earned right. my well my stripes as a chill bride. Other than you know? <laughs> an exception I can think of that stands out in my mind right now, most people came to me and said, that dress is so Mallory. <laughs> I mean, people really didn't expect a big white Cinderella gown. They knew it would be something different. So, and a lot of people also said it's very European. Yeah, I you know. 
I'm their Who knows? You know. Who knows? I will say that one reaction we got that was not, you know, uh, complimentary. Well, yeah, that's a really good way to describe it, right? Is that this woman came into the shop? Oh, this was after the yeah years after the years couple after years the after, after the wedding. We've got it this, was hanging in the shop. Got the dress hanging. I often would show it for the serger right. hem and the. De- I mean, it's a great demo piece, right? So. This lady just turns to me after I've done all this work for her. This was a stupid thing that I did. Like, the way I was, I, I don't know why I did all you this work. You above and beyond for I, her. It was, it, she was like, I need these jackets all embroidered. And I was like, well, go get them embroidered. And she's like, well, I want to, like, sit there while you do it. And I'm like, okay, you know. And so, anyway, <laughs> anyway she just turns to me as she's leaving, and she goes, you know, I don't mean to offend anybody. No, not at all. You shouldn't but mean offense. That is the ugliest dress I have ever seen. And I was so tired that I was just like, okay. Like, I, was, I didn't care. I was just the other like, funny what? part of that story is I just la- When Mallory told me this, I laughed and laughed and laughed. And then I realized I had made the dress. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just not. I don't know how she thought it was so ugly. It's, I, you know. It might not be someone's cup of tea, but I just don't think it's offensive. Well, and then I do want to say one last thing about the dress but before we go. And if you want all these details and some really detailed photographs uh, and construction tips uh, for this dress, then you want to get the zine. You want to go to SewHere.com slash zine. That's Z-I-N-E, like the last syllable of magazine. Tell them how you seamed the lace together. We didn't say that. What, what was the construction technique? So you straight stitched I, I it. Would, I would assume I straight stitched and then went right up to it with. Um, let me look. With yeah, the, yeah, you with look. The surgeon, you look. Right? No, you didn't. I don't think. Oh so. no, no, I didn't. So it looks like I straight stitched it, folded the seam over, and then top stitched it, and, and then, then trimmed, trimmed it away. Yeah. That's so what there's I did. a lot of ways to do so this. So probably yeah. I had tried the serger. I would assume I tried the serger because that's what I always no, do. No, use it a lot. We have a lot and, of samples. Yeah, I and think. Um, it probably, you know. It, it either pulled or gave too much bulk or something. Yes. I mean, again, there are those who test and those who wish they tested, right? I think we have your sample bodices. Um, I know what box it's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have some of those things. So I'll include those in the zine as well. So, uh, yeah, this this is my wedding dress. Our next episode is going to be about Hillary's wedding dress that Mom made. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to feature both of these in the zine, unless this article just gets so long. Or at least long. parts, of, uh, parts that, of, at least some of the nifty stuff that yes. was done, like, inside them or something. Yes, exactly. So it'll be a really yeah. big inside look. And so when I'm talking about the zine, I have no idea what ad's going in the ad spot this week. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, this is for our members, and so when you join SoHere.com as a member, what you're doing is you're supporting the podcast that you enjoy. Um, it is a monthly fee. You can choose to join at the straight stitch level, the back stitch level, or the zigzag level, and they all have special little bonuses. But this is, you know, one way that we support the cost of the podcast and the group. And the zine is automatically delivered to Backstitch and Straight Stitch members. It's a digital download um, with tips or a tutorial. Uh, that's where the kimono, you know, came from is is the zine. And so, yeah, or you can buy it. You can buy it as a one-off, too, if you just oh, want to okay. do that. And it's a it's a digital thing. So we so appreciate. if you have to make a wedding dress in the next year or so or it two might months be a good or thing two to weeks. Have. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you want to. Uh, so yes, we appreciate all of our members who are listening and so many people have joined, um, since we launched this and we hope that you are enjoying all the free content and then all of the fun extra goodies for members. So mom, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.